Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Off the Print. Tonight with me is senior journalist Kalum Bandara and SLPP parliamentarian and former state minister Susil Premajayanta, who has been in the news uh, very lately uh, after he was uh, sacked from his position uh, as the state minister by President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Kalum, thank you for thank joining you. me on the program. Uh, Ms. Premajayanta, thank you so much. We are seated with you at a very critical time. It's not even been two weeks since you were removed uh, from your position, uh, from your state ministry, um, and told to go home by the president, only because you spoke something against the government, which people see as speaking the truth. Uh, what's going on in your mind at the no, moment? Actually, that was happened casually. Normally, every Sunday, if I'm in Colombo, because Sunday fair in uh, Delkanda is close to my place. Okay. Now new location also uh, for that uh, uh, Sunday fair. Uh, it is I managed to get some land from uh, the people who own this land. Mm -hmm. Still, they are not being paid <laughs> the compensation. But I used to go to Delkanda Sunday fair every Sunday if I am in Colombo. So then uh, this particular day on second of January. I went to Sunday fair, a few vendors compared to uh, uh, some other days. And uh, uh, then one journalist, one, uh, uh, one person with uh, uh, the mic and the camera came to me after interviewing some vendors and uh, uh, the people who came to the Sunday fair. And they asked me, uh, uh, Minister, now see uh, the, the chilies prices 1,200 a kilo. Okay. So what can you say? So then I said this is a result of uh, not using uh, fertilizer, pesticides, right, by the farmers because there's a shortage. Okay. So as a result of course then you are not getting the yield. So then naturally uh, supply and demand is there. So then the demand is higher than supply. So naturally the price is going up. So then next session he asked me, so who is responsible for this? Mm -hmm. I said the people who are engaged with agriculture and trade, right? They must, they are responsible for this. Then he said, then what about the ministers? Not only the officials, even the ministers, it is their duty to see the, the people are getting uh, the commodities, essential items at a fair price. And then uh, there's enough uh, items in the market. Uh, so then uh, he asked me whether the this, uh, these people are failed. So I At said. At which point you said, sir, failed? No, no, I didn't say. Okay. I didn't say. I didn't say, yes, uh, officials and the ministers, it is their duty. That's what I say. Yes, but actually, the minister, minister, you have been critical of the government on and off even before that. Before so that. So, what prompted them to? take stuff no, action like this no, at this time. Is of course, and you know, I entered the parliament in the year 2000. So before that, I entered in politics in 1991, way back, as the vice chairman of the court urban council, then urban council, now it's municipal council. Then after two years, in 1993, I entered the provincial council, the western province. Then I became the chief minister of the western province in 1995. Then I contested the provincial council election in the western province. And I, again I was elected, then I served as the chief minister for five years, then I was sent to Gampa, where I don't have my vote even. So then I came first, at the first uh, election, general election, I contested uh, in Gampa district. Then the, the first instance, I was given the minister portfolio of education okay. in the year 2000. So then I continued like that to several governments and then uh, I became the uh, General Secretary of the UPFA formed in uh, February in the year 2004. Then about 12 elections, presidential election, general election, uh, uh, then provincial councils and the local elections. 12 elections, it is I as the General Secretary of the UPFA sign all the nomination papers including three nomination papers of 5th uh, uh, Executive President Mahindra Rajamans. But under this presidency of Gotabaya Rajapaksa, you have been critical, Minister. You have been making some rec remarks no, which have been critical against the government. Why were you doing that? The critical means in some uh, some fields, of course. Now you see, uh, 
uh, I can remember in parliament somewhere around October <coughs> at a debate. Uh, debate was on uh, the report submitted by the chairman of the COPE committee, Professor Charita Herat, regarding the street, okay. what happened to the street. So then we were in, I, uh, I was one of, I, 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 am, I was a member of COPE. So then I explained it. So during that period, of course, two, two members from government side and the opposition, it was a cross talks. So then I was waiting. So then I said, what is this? I was on my feet, so they were they are, they are having uh, cross talks. So then I said, no, this is not the way to speak in parliament. And in the same time, I referred to uh, the, uh, 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 the new constitution. Okay. The any constitution or law, right? So we had to discuss in parliament. It is the duty of the legislature to pass all these bills, not the outsiders. Outsiders can help; they can give us technical support like that, and then. Okay. I pointed out that when uh, the then government, 1970 government, when they introduced the Republican constitution in 1972, it took two years and converted the entire parliament into a constitutional council. Okay. Right. Similarly, Honorable uh, Ranil Wickrama Singh, as the Prime Minister of the 2015 government, okay. right, he also did the same thing and I was one of the channel of the subcommittees of the public service. because. Okay. By that time, of course, I have, uh, uh, I had a master's in public administration, right. but after that I completed my PhD also in public administration. Okay. So, I did my LLB in 1982, then attorney in 1985 and okay. started active practice in Colombo High Courts in 1985. Right. Before that, I was a banker, I was in the bank council for 9 years and I got to my banking exam. So, it means that I have fulfilled the requirements. To be a parliamentarian, a legislature, yes. in the present context. Right. Minister, we are just going to go in for a short break. <coughs> yes. We are just going to go in for a short break. We will be right back. Welcome back to Off the Print. Tonight with me, senior journalist Kalum Bandara and SLPP parliamentarian Susil Premajanta. Mr. Premajanta, unfortunately, you are not in part of the state ministry anymore uh, because it was taken away from you but when you were sacked uh, that day there was a bit of a publicity stunt created by you uh, where you went home in the three-wheeler saying that you have handed over all your official vehicles and you got into a three-wheeler and you went home can i ask you you've been an mp for 22 years how did you come here if you don't have a vehicle no actually i came here to your program uh, with a hired one, oh, one okay. of my friends. For 22 so, years you have not been owning no, your own vehicle? Is, let me explain that uh, I joined uh, 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 the unofficial bar in 1985. Within two years I managed to uh, purchase a uh, second hand vehicle okay. at that time. Okay. <coughs> so I had about three, four vehicles I changed during uh, that particular period. But uh, after becoming a parliamentarian, normally parliamentarians are given a uh, 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 duty free vehicle permit uh, every five years. So after five years, they can transfer it. Okay. Uh, most of the parliamentarians, what they do is after five years or six years or seven years, they transfer it. So like that, of course, the last uh, permit was given, I think, five, six, seven years ago. Okay. Right um, now, at the moment, I don't have, but what I did was, I was... Send, I was uh, uh, sent the message uh, uh, in the morning that particular day. Yes. So I straight away went to the ministry. I handed over all the vehicles. How do you feel that the fact that 22 years you served and then you were just sacked overnight for just speaking something no, as people see as the truth? How do you feel for being sacked? Oh, that's it's a sacked, you can say sacked or removed. Whatever the it's word, the same thing, use. Mr. Premajant. It's meaning, the same thing. Same meaning. But the thing is, you know, that is uh, that, that because of the according to the constitution, under the executive powers, the president can appoint, especially after the introduction of twentieth amendment to the constitution, no need to consult the prime minister. Okay. Right. The president can appoint uh, any member of parliament as the minister or the state minister, or president has the power to remove okay. without 
giving any reason yes any minister state minister but how do you feel no of course i i thought it's good for me yes now mr premijan the one thing now that they have taken the toughest action against you that you have been stripped of your portfolio what is your next move next move is now the next day yes i started my practice again in hastaf yes. because i i have a office there mm -hmm. i have a partner and the juniors yeah. uh, because i took over this uh, uh, statements of reforms yeah. because it is related related to education mm -hmm. if i am given any other uh, state minister i won't have yeah. accepted that yeah. because i am interested that i i strongly believe that it is the time to reform the education system okay. in the country but you can do it overnight it will yes. take at least 10 years because i have gone through education reforms in neighboring india and the finland the number one country in education and the singapore yeah. i have done a comparative study yes. okay so so that is why i accepted that otherwise of course Yes. when i But entered the parliament i was given the portfolio of education yes. way back in uh, uh, 2000 yes. uh, 2000 But actually, so why should i accept uh, uh, the less than that yes. yeah. <laughs> actually i am asking about your role not as a lawyer as a law maker what is your next next step as a law maker next actually step of course i think we have to amend of laws of course especially the even the uh, we have to do constitution reforms yes i believe that it's time to do away with executive presidency But so yes. but that is and then the, the prime minister and the cabinet ministers yeah. to be given the executive powers like we had before 1970 but, but actually you, there is a lot of dissension within the government at the moment in that context will it be realistic to bring about constitutional reforms how can i don't know constitutional reforms of course you have to you have to do all the reforms within the parliament yes the committee uh, the, you can appoint uh, you can convert entire parliament into constitutional council law you can appoint a select committee and then you can call you know uh, proposals from political parties uh, uh, citizens uh, some organizations then of course we have to go through it it's a it's a very you know uh, 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 deep uh, 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 consultation why did you agree to the 20th amendment then mr president oh Prabhu that's a good question because uh, 19th amendment to the constitution we passed that in the midnight mm. on that particular day right there were over, over 150 amendments to the original draft mm -hmm. so we did it hurried mm -hmm. so as a result of the you can see after passing the 20th amendment the question you you, you can see some ambiguity mm -hmm. and contradictions within that uh, 19th amendment to the constitution so actually as a law maker i wanted to do away with all these you know uh, uh, small ambiguities and the uh, Uh, contradictions but all, you all gave back all the powers to the president in the 20th yes, amendment that, yes at the same time so then the the draft uh, the people who drafted that of course given the powers to the president uh, disregarding the even the prime minister if you didn't want the executive presidency no, you could have is, stood out and said no i will not allow the 20th no, amendment the to get passed no but the thing is what is the use of one particular person is opposing that of course mm. no use at that time we we have, we have to keep it in our mind of course we uh we passed the 20th amendment within couple of months of the uh, present government came into power yes. right but there was a there was another issue yes. that this is only a temporary as we were told yes. it's on it is understanding that it's a temporary because uh, there will be a constitution reforms yes holistic approach to the yes. constitution right so we were waiting for that yes mr premachand the kalum yes we are just going to go in for a short break we will be right back Welcome back to Off the Print. Hello. Yes, Mr. Premijan. And now we see a lot of, I mean, signs of possible changes in politics these days. Will there be any kind of split in the government according to your experience? To my knowledge, uh, uh, there is no split uh, in the government. Mm -hmm. But there are some different views because yes. there you find it's a coalition government. Yes. Right. There are about fifteen, uh, sixteen political parties. Yes. So out of that uh, the section of the minority politics. political parties yes they have a different views now see for an example yugodanavi power plant yes so three of the cabinet ministers have gone to supreme court like yes. that of course there are some different views mm. okay. minister so, yes yes go Hello, you can go no ahead. how will the situation unfold in politics in your i mean view no we can see now it's true that uh, covid 19 uh, 
situation mm -hmm. is badly affected to yes. the economy, the society, for everything. Yes. Not only here, even in the world. Yes. Mm. But you can see some countries like Bangladesh, uh, Vietnam. So they have improved their reserves, they have improved their GDP mm. with all these challenges, mm -hmm. of course. So as a tiny island and yes. the, uh, the people uh, we maintain here, mm. the high literacy rate yes. uh, within the region, somewhere around 94, 95. Mm. So why can't we do that? But the thing is, I believe that uh, you, can't, you have to select right person to the right position. Mm. Minister, you uh, unfortunately had to leave your position because you said something which the president saw as critical against the government. Uh, but you have been with this government since 2019. Do you think that those who speak the truth have no place under the presidency of Pres uh, Gotabaya Rajapaksa? It is the, uh, it is of course, evaluation has to be done by the people of the country. Uh, by following the actions taken but by does the uh, cabinet, authorities. Does the cabinet and does the deputy ministers and the state ministers have the freedom to tell the president that look, this is wrong, this should not be happening this way. Do you in, all have that in, freedom? In my case, of course, for last uh, three, four months, of course, we didn't have uh, much uh, group meetings mm. to express our views. Other than uh, uh, the, this particular state ministry, we had a Zoom meeting mm. uh, three months ago. Yeah. During that period, of course, about within, within one and a half, two hours time ago, we were discussing the how we are going to introduce the reforms. That's all we discussed, but we didn't discuss the, uh, the, the burning issues mm. uh, uh, at the moment uh, that Actually people in the, are suffering. Uh, when we talk about the opposition, I mean, we see a lot of leaders, they aspire to be next leaders, next presidents, actually. If I cite as examples, Andro Kumar Desanayaka, we see a lot of political work by former President Maitri Palasirisen, and then the opposition leader, Sajid Premadas, is there. How do you look at these personalities? No, of course, they have freedom to express their views according to their policies. But the thing is, then people again, of course, evaluate their past performances. Yes. Right? People take decision at a general election or at a presidential election. Yeah. If now see the present president came as a, is not a politician. Yes. He is an administrator and the uh, yeah. army personnel. Yeah. Of course, then of course there are no way to uh, evaluate the performance yeah. of the uh, the president. But uh, there was a general consensus among the people and the this one well, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha uh, was behind him. Yes. So then a lot of people. Uh, uh, had uh, trust uh, but do you uh, see towards him, uh, former president. But yeah. do you see him as a strong leader, President Gotabe Rajapaksa? In your years of experience as a politician, 22 years is not a short time, Mr. Premajanti. You've so been a MP for 22 I years. To that. What I can say is as a, as a person who have done the masters in public administration, the uh, PhD of course, yes. we are doing all these, you know, leadership theories and all that. Mm. But according to my knowledge, of course, he, uh, certain certain areas, of course, especially the politics, of course, okay. he has to discuss these matters with the uh, former president and the prime minister. Now, can he's you not see? a stranger. Yes. The elder brother. So, what you are saying is he's not discussing that with Mahindra Rajapaksa, that I don't is know. it? No, I because, you because my honourable Mahindra Rajapaksa has, uh, he had a uh, 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 situation where, in a critical situation, he used to discuss the uh, important matters with uh, uh, the leaders of mm -hmm. the uh, alliance. Actually, what do you think of the promotion of another non-traditional politician as the president next time? It what will be experience? a failure, definitely. Now you need yes. a traditional politician with knowledge, yes. some some uh, education background, yes. and the experience and the integrity. Yes, that's what the people are searching at the moment. And you served in the last government under former president Maitri yes. Palasirisena. Oh, How do you assess his performance according to your view? Oh, no. During, of course, he performed. Now, no, see, for an example, 28 years long uh, struggle, yes. right, uh, North and East issue. Mm. So, militarily, he defeated, mm. right? That is why we are, we are uh, at this stage. Yes. Uh, and the development, of course. Yes. Now, see, 2009, after, immediately after the uh, war is over, yes. so we went to IMF. Mm. And we were given 2.5 billion dollars standby loan. Yes. With that, of course, we managed to improve our rates. Mm. And then the uh, 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 donor agencies, so they also yes. gave us some loans. And then the, you know, for last last two decades, yes. the highest GDP rates mm -hmm. recorded in the year 2010 and 11. Mm -hmm. So we can do the same thing. Actually, now. I'm asking about your assessment about the former president, Maitri Palasirisena. You worked under him as well yes. for five years. Yes. 
So how you did must you see his leadership? The, but the thing is, you know, uh, you ask him very difficult questions <laughs> because I can't say yes or no. But I have to explain a little bit. Of course, he, of course, suddenly yeah. at at that time, of course, we didn't have much issues like now. Mm -hmm. I was the general secretary of the UPFA, mm -hmm. so we worked very hard mm -hmm. for the victory of uh, former president. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the politicians now holding key positions in present government, they don't know what happened at that time. Mm -hmm. But we lost it. Yeah. Now the situation is completely different, of course. Mm -hmm. So the leadership means uh, the, the if the country is normal, world is normal, so you can lead the country yeah. without much problem. But if you confront yes. with uh, massive issues like uh, uh, COVID-19, shortage of foreign exchange, then the shortage of you know food items, uh, uh, then inflation and all that of course, then you must have a good think tank, discuss all these things, right? So even in United States, where you see how many advisors are there. Yes. For each and every subject, you find experts. That is how they manage their So country. do you think communication and dialogue is very much lacking very in this government? I think so. And in case, if you are given the chance to contest the next election as the ne presidential candidate, <laughs> will you accept it? <laughs> will it's we see Susil Premacharanta being the presidential candidate? It is very candidate. remote, but what I can say is, first of all, we must have clear policies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have to gather the people around the policies, mm -hmm. not the political parties or uh, one particular person. Mm -hmm. But you need policies which can be implemented. Yes. You can say these are the policies, but the thing is, if you can't implement, yes. it's useless. Mr. Premacharanta, would you want to see another Rajapaksa contesting in the future presidential elections? It is up to, uh, it is. it depends on their destiny. Yes. But would you like to see somebody from the Rajapaksa family contesting no, the presidential election? I'm not election? saying that, of course. It's people to decide. Yes. The party can decide mm -hmm. who will be the yes. candidate. But yes. the thing is, it's people to decide, uh, right? Whether we continue the same uh, system yes. or whether we need system change. Mr. Premajanta, yes. our final question for the night. Um, are you going to continue being part of the SLPP as a parliamentarian yes, or are you planning to step down? No, because the thing is, you know, at the moment I am a, I am, I am elected yes. uh, in the Colombo district under mm. the port tour, okay. SLPP. Yes. So I have to continue, right? Uh, in this particular political party, if I am doing that, of course, they can easily take disciplinary action and expel me. But at least you have any idea to quit the government and sit in the opposition? No, at the moment I have, I don't have such idea. Yes, but you will stick to the government. Uh, I will be there. Yes. But the thing is, I will, I will try to get around the yes. people with some knowledge, not the political parties, but some people with professional background and the academic background and the uh, experience and the integrity yes. to discuss the present issues yes. and then, if possible, to advise the government or particular. Uh, People. Who are the prospective leaders in your mind actually? I can't see at the moment. Because the thing is you don't forget. Yes. Some leaders, their thinking pattern is still in 20th century. Mm -hmm. Right? But don't forget that we are in the third decade of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. We have to introduce all these emerging technologies. Yes. Artificial intelligence, robotics, actually, nanotechnology, biotechnology, yeah, genomics, all that. When you say something like that, who are you referring to? Here, of course, I, at the moment, I don't see any people. Right. Except me, you, have you seen any 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 politicians speaking about emerging technologies to introduce? Mm -hmm. Even in reforms, of course, then you have to introduce the critical thinking, mm -hmm. problem solving. Mm -hmm. uh, are we doing in our schools at the moment? Yes. But within next five to ten years, in the international uh, education systems, of course. So, how do you read the? In your mind, actually, how do you read the present opposition leader? Well, he has his own policies and of course, but the thing is, uh, he has to discuss all these matters with, you know, experts. Right. Okay, Mr. Premacharanta Kalum, yes. we are going to have to sadly let you go and end the program. But we wish you all the best in your future endeavours. And we hope that whatever issues you are facing with the SLPP is sorted out very soon. And we see Susil Premacharanta back in action very soon. Thank you very much, Foko. Thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. We will be back again next week with a brand new episode of Off the Print. Goodbye and good night.